G'day folks, looky what I found. No, I didn't pull it from the wreckage of a crashed plane. I found this actually in a rather unassuming place. It actually came up cheap on eBay in Australia. Uh, you can buy them from international sources. They usually cost quite a bit of money. This one came up nice and cheap, so I've always wanted one. I've always wanted to see what's inside them. I know it's inside, uh, I think a UK built one that Mike's electric stuff pulled down. I know a few people suggested I try and parody his intro, but I don't have those kind of video editing skills. But I do have a different kind of flight recorder. This is a Fairchild F800 digital flight recorder. Now I don't think it uses a solid state drive or anything. There is a um, look what looks like a mechanical drive in there with a flywheel on it. Plus it was made in the on the 12th 1989, so. It can't be a solid state, but it probably just encodes in digital or something like that, rather than the uh, old analog metal tape. So, yeah, it's quite an interesting bit of kit. Its data, obviously, is an F800, part number 17, 17M703-274. Now, the serial number was ground off with a die grinder, a little pencil, pencil grinder there. Actually, I'll see if I can get a better shot of that. It's very reflective. Oh, that's better. Yeah, there we go. You can see the codes on it. Now, they've ground the serial number off with the die grinder, but I held it up. Took it off, I took the plate off and held it up to some very bright light looking at the underside of it. And comparing to the digits on these sides here, I was able to read, and I just sort of roughly marked it on there with a pen, which is mostly gone, but it's, uh, it's written down somewhere else. It's 5302. That's its actual serial number. So despite grinding it off, I was able to identify it. I don't know where to, oh, I sort of do know where to start for identifying what plane it came from. Probably these guys, not too far from me actually. A couple of hours drive. There's a program revision, R4. And you can see down there, modification codes. They've filled in. Yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. Copyright 82 for the program, so it's probably definitely not a uh, solid state like ROM type recorder, not a flash flash card recorder. Uh, there's too much too much black too much metal box in there, too much protected area with a flywheel on it, a directional flywheel. So, yeah, I think we've got ourselves an old-fashioned tape type that just encodes in digital. So yeah, it's made by Fairchild USA. I think now they're called something else. As you can see, I think this is a service port for reading it. You can plug your terminal into this and read whatever's on it. Now, one thing that's missing, and it was being sold separately for an extra $100, which I didn't buy, uh, that was the uh, underwater sonar beacon that en en enables itself once it's immersed in water. So, that gives off, I think it's a 31 or 32 kilohertz pulse every so many seconds or something. But you look them up online, they've got a little canister. It just looks like a little uh, flashbang canister. Only about that big, about the size of a um, candy, large candy canister, that sort of thing. Or battery. Looks like a large battery, really. These ports here, one of these is airspeed and the other one is cabin pressure or something. No, altitude. One's altitude and one's airspeed. So... That's all in there. Cabin pressure would be put into this via an electronic signal. Uh, that's how it would monitor what the cabin pressure is. And on the back, the, I think these are the main loom ports that it plugs into. These would slide into racks and then it will interface with these ports on the back. And there's just a locking screw under that. So, yeah, I have had it open. It's pretty much all there. I haven't had the main core unit open. I just opened it up at work when it came in. And, uh, and quite a few guys were quite interested to see it. So, of course, I had to open it up. Um, there's some really nice gear in here. So, let's have a closer look. Okay, let's have a go at this. Let's see how well the tripod works. Mind you, it's blocking access to the back area. So, oh, for goodness sake, now I'm getting messages. They can wait. Don't worry, it's my steam, not yours. I've already got the top screw out, but that's just a locking screw, it doesn't have to come out. Uh, 
Let's try and do this without knocking the camera over or blocking it. There we go. Box is all stainless. That's a nine on the serial. I just noticed something. Five three nine two. I got the um, serial number off the underside of the tag, and that O could be a nine. I was actually a bit skeptical about whether or not it was an O. Uh, yeah, more than likely that's our serial number. Five three nine two. At least there's two numbers I can try running in the database. Yeah, I'll, I'll contact the previous company, this flight flight data systems, it's Melbourne and uh, just see if they have anything to say. If it's going to cost an arm and a leg to get them to look it up, yeah, no big deal, but I find it hard to believe it wouldn't be all on computer record by now. If someone's got to go through the archives and find paperwork, well, what do you do? Anyway. Oh, let's see, you can't read that, can you? There we go. We've got power supply, this is a rack, rack of cards. Power supply. SYN DIG MUX1 SYNC something SYNC DIG Convergence maybe Don't know Interface 2 Analog to Digital Converter So it's got a full AD converter in there um, CPU card I've had that one out That's got some pretty nice stuff on it We'll have a I'll close look at these cards in macro Write Amplifier that's that one. Read amplifier. Altitude measuring card, which has its um, barometric transducer on it or switch. Well, it'd be a transducer, not just a switch. Uh, and that's the airspeed transducer. Very interesting stuff. Very well made. And in there, that stainless or nickel alloy housing is the um, the recorder unit. Probably under that much insulation. This is made in 89, so I wouldn't expect them to be using asbestos in it, but I'll be careful. Uh, underneath, this is what tells me it's not a uh, solid state drive. It's got a flywheel direction only that way, and it turns. That's its little motor flywheel. So that can all be unplugged and removed separately. That's going to come out last. But first, let's have a look at the cards. You can also see everything's meticulously put together by hand, hand soldered. Uh, it's not heat shrunk, it's got little Teflon, what feels like Teflon or fine poly sleeves over it. Um, what can I say, it's really nice key gear. Now the power supply for this is 120 volts, 400 hertz. So don't expect me to just be able to plug it in and show you anything. Uh, even then I don't have the pinouts for any of it, so I'm not going to be able to do anything even if there is a tape in it. I don't think there'll be a tape in it. I can't say I've ever seen one sold with a uh, tape. I think there might be some on eBay with tapes still in them, but usually it's the first thing that comes out when they decide to surplus or scrap them. And I don't know if this one was scrapped or just old surplus. Did look up the manufacturer or the model and apparently these have quite a few problems and are probably obsolete now because of that but they're fitted to most commercial airliners as well as smaller planes and possibly even military planes they're a very common unit they're fitted to 747s and things like that um, they're all over the board anyway let's have a closer look at some of these cards as I pull them out I'm going to stack them all in a box on their own in order and yeah they can all go back in the way they came out uh, the other thing, they are marked so I can mix them up but I would rather not. So let's get set up and do that. We'll probably have a look at this in a separate video because looking through these cards is going to take ages. You'll see this in two parts. Okay, well one thing to note before we proceed, uh, not only is that in French but um, this is a flight data recorder, not a cockpit voice recorder. They are both different things. Uh, cockpit voice recorder does what its name implies, it records from microphones in the cockpit. Um, flight data recorder is a bit more interesting because it monitors all the aspects of the airplanes, mechanical, electrical, hydraulic and whatever else systems, control systems, everything, pressures, air speeders we'll find out. Um, yeah, if something, if 
something goes mechanically wrong, this box knows about it uh, most of the time. Obviously there have been plenty of air crashes where they're not 100% sure because it's just something the box can't control or can't monitor. Um, but things like an engine failure would come up, hydraulic system failure, or pilot error is often often retold by the contents of this device. It will, uh, if the pilot tries to take off with the flaps in the wrong position or something like that, or the brakes partially locked on, it knows about it and so do the investigators despite the fact that everyone could have died. Uh, this box retells their story if they're dead. Uh, even if they're not dead, a lot of the time they the pilot doesn't really know what went on, so they look at this and it might come up with uh, either operator error, outside interference, or just a mechanical failure. So there's a lot to it. You've got to watch the series Air Crash Investigation. I've been watching them like mad for the last few weeks and I've pretty much run out of episodes to watch on YouTube. I'll have to see how, where else I can get them from. I don't have cable or anything, but it's well worth watching. It's really interesting to see the lengths they go to to find out these things and some of the most simplistic things that bring down a plane and kill hundreds of people. It's quite sad sometimes. Well, it's always sad when a lot of people die like that, but when it's for the sake of a 10 cent part or something like that, it's even worse. And as you can see in there, there's the hoses going down behind the flywheel to the uh, barometric um, transducers coming from those little valves there. They've just got little Schrader valve cores, just like a car tyre. Uh, just to check flow once they're unplugged and prevent contaminants from getting in. You obviously you just recap it as soon as it's unplugged. One of the caps is missing, but that's not a big deal. This isn't going to be airworthy again. But you can see up in there is various transformers and things like that. Power supply transformer. High wattage resistor with a metal case on it, probably part of the power supply. And a lot of very nice cable work. These would all be assembled in groups on another part of the line and then brought in and fitted and then wired off to their respective area. They wouldn't try and assemble all this together in the case like this. They just screw them in one at a time and make sure everything's routed properly up through the top. Very nicely tied off. They've got cable ties. It's not hand, um, not, not tied in waxed string or anything like that. But yeah, let's have a closer look. There's a couple of little relays here. So you've got normally open and normally closed contact and a coil across it. So yeah, there's the commons there and there and there's a normally closed and a normally open and normally closed and a normally open. So they're a decent little relay. Looks like they've even got little diodes on them to prevent any feedback across the coil. Yeah, that's gone looking at it from the bottom. Yeah, that's off the coil too. So those little diodes just prevent a spike from coming back when the, the coil field collapses. Even stuff that I build at work gets that, just so it doesn't fry the wireless remote controls we put in. Like forward reversing motor relays. You just put a, um, a little diode across the uh, across the coil, just in case. Uh, automotive relays get the same thing to prevent protect ECUs. If you use a uh, relay, use lots of relays without diodes in them on a car with a sensitive ECU, you'll probably eventually kill it. It's not a good thing. But anyway, let's start popping some cards out. And that looks like TIG welded stainless or nickel alloy, something like that. Good stuff. All the cases alley as well. Despite weighing 16 kilos or 36 something pounds, um, it's mostly alloy apart from that. Well, aluminum, not nickel alloy or chrome alloy, whatever it is. Okay then. So after screw removal, brace comes off, it's got a nice silicon rubber padding on it. It's another brace bridge between the two cards with the uh, pressure transducers on them. But let's start at the back. This is power supply. So it's voltage regulation and all that good stuff. And these are very tight. Oh, we see what's happened with that one. That's why you were scrapped. Oh, that lead's completely blown off. And I think that's about it. I bet you something's gone short to do that, though. Yeah, that's evil. I haven't had these cards out, so... There's the first sign of trouble. <laughs> 
plus 8.5 volts. It's had a fair meltdown, although a lot of that looks like burnt silicon from its uh, that mounting nearby. Maybe the um, voltage reg went short and got full voltage or something across it. Yeah, there's plus 12 volt rail. That all looks intact. Just the lead off that cap's completely blown away. Doesn't look like anything else is blown. There's a lot of corrosion on the uh, inside of the case down there. Evidently from the burning, the combustion byproducts. You can see the corrosion in there. Even though it's anodized, it looks like it's attacked it, or at least sooted it up a bit. But yeah, that's interesting. It doesn't look like there are any other parts mounted there. It's just that one. Yeah. It's arced over between the two. It's arced over between the um, positive and negative of that cap. It's flashed over for some reason. It's probably had a power surge or a spike or something like that. Okay. Well, at least we know how it died. This is an actual autopsy. I wasn't sure if this thing worked when it was decommissioned. It might have been obsolete, but as it looks, it's actually dead. Right, so that is sync MUX assembly and multi-layer board it's double layer I don't think it's got an inner layer it might have inner layers lots of different ICs though not very clear though let's see if we can fix that image up might be easier just to pull all the boards and go just go straight macro mode. Okay, I tweaked a few settings. This is in high quality mode, so it's going to make big files. But anyway, you can see some of the ICs that are on it. There's a lot of them. Okay, this is SD converter. Digital analog analog to digital converter. Nice them upside down, I think. Made by RCA. Digital analog converter chips by the looks of it, DAC. Motor roller stuff. Yeah. Looks like more of the same. That one is Sync MUX assembly. nothing on the underside of these cards they're all through hole no SMDs no nothing okay this one is interface 2 assembly not a lot on it some a lot of Motorola stuff not sure what that other one is though they are the manufacturer an RCA at the top. I don't know my ICs very well so I can't tell you what they are but I'm sure someone's sitting there googling every one of them as they watch this. Okay you are very well made. Analog digital converter. That's the AD converter. What was that other one? Sync dig SYN dig converter. That was the other converter. This is the analog digital converter. So shiny, the conformal coating they put over them is so shiny, the light's just going crazy. Various potentiometers, small capacitors, 
Notice not many electrolytics, just some small ones. Lots of polyfilm caps. This one is interface one. So we had interface two before, this is interface one. Oh, metal can transistors, they are 2N2907A. Is it 2N2 2N2222A? Two, 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 uh, more of the same. So watch the light. This was made in 85. Made when I was born. It's old. Getting old. 27 years old. Now, this is the brains of it. This is a CPU card. I've had this one out before. That is the main CPU. It says LD80C31BH. And the second set of digits is L9060077. Pretty sure that's the main CPU. The other chip there. Don't know how well this is going to show up in rendering, but I'll render it in high, highest quality I can. You can see it's been revised. 94. This one is right amplifier. Not much to that. Lots of diodes. Not much else, just a few ICs. Notice that trace looks like a ground trace or something goes all the way around the outside of the board. Different one. Read amplifier. Yeah. It's got writing all over it. I wonder if this one's been changed out from another unit. What are these little ones? Motorola MC1558U. Why do I know that code? Op amp or something? I'll have to look that one up. Obviously got like six channels or something set up. Yeah. Six tracks maybe. Don't know. Now this is a flight data recorder. This doesn't do cockpit voice, at least as far as I can tell. Yeah, this is pressure. And this hose also goes into this one down here. Altitude. A lot of conformal coating on there. It's like silicon. Those white ones, IRC one nine 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 dash zero seven dash one zero zero three F. Yeah. Well coated in goo and silicon. All very similar, yeah. Last one. Airspeed. Yeah, so it compares altitude and airspeed by the looks of it. It's got a bridge between altitude and airspeed. Maybe differential or something like that between the two. Anyway. It's about as clear as I can make it, but... Yeah. I'm 
getting pinged on IRC. Yeah, speed. Yeah. I'll take some high res shots of this and post them up on my Google Plus. It'll give you a better idea of what's in it. I'm not just going to rely on the video. This is just for the video side of it. Close ups. I'll take close ups now and then in another video we'll have a crack at this metal box. What's inside the mystery box? Well, I know what's inside. There's a recorder in there. But let's find out if it has a tape in it. Anyway, that's been the exterior and the digital and analog cards. Thanks for watching. I'll post a link in the description when I get time to upload to Google Plus all the close-ups of these cards. They'll be a lot easier to examine than on the video. Thanks for watching.